it doesn't mean a lot. It sounds like a bunch of marketing garbage to try and make you buy a video card. Hey, welcome back to GT Canada. I have great news for you console owners of this next gen series. Yes, I'm talking to you PlayStation 5 owners, but also to you Xbox Series X owners. So as it turns out, your gaming systems are not actually complete. They are not living up to the full expectations of what they are capable of. But have no fear, because AMD is about to release a technology that will drastically increase the performance of your gaming system. Now you may have already heard, um, it, it was released on Linus Tech Tips most recently, that's kind of where it was leaked first. AMD is working on a competitor to the NVIDIA DLSS processing system. Now what is DLSS? Uh, I don't know, actually, I, I don't know. So at its current version is DLSS 2.0. DLSS 1.0 was crap. It was a good proof of concept, but it didn't do anything appreciable to the end user, and it was clunky. So nobody really got very excited about it. DLSS 2.0 came out, and it seems to be doing a lot better. So it is, according to NVIDIA, DLSS is a real-time version of NVIDIA's screenshot-enhancing Ansel technology. It renders the image at a lower resolution to provide a performance boost, then applies various effects to deliver a relatively comparable overall effect to raising the resolution. What? Right, I know. It doesn't mean a lot. It sounds like a bunch of marketing garbage to try and make you buy a video card because it supports DLSS 2.0 or DLSS 3.0 or did you get the new one that supports DLSS 4.0? You know, it's just one more marketing gimmick. Or is it? That's the question, is it? Is it a marketing gimmick or does it actually do something? So I'm gonna try and explain what it does in a way that everybody can understand, okay? It will still get a little techy, but bear with me. So the actual AMD version is called AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which tells you a little bit more at least than DLSS, but everyone loves their acronyms. So what is Super Resolution? Well, here, let me see what AMD says. So first of all, why does this help my PlayStation 5 or my Xbox Series X? Well, you have an AMD graphics card in your gaming system. Quite frankly, the current generation of gaming systems are essentially high-end PCs. They have high-end PC uh, CPUs, they have high-end PC uh, GPUs that come from a AMD, and in fact, AMD supplied a similar video card for both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox, which further kind of connects them together so that we win as a whole. Why do we win? Because when the video cards are similar or the same, they can squeeze out maximum performance from one and then just adjust the, the settings just like a CPU on the other until it runs good too. So what they will hopefully do is take the more powerful system and develop for that. Turn everything on, turn all the features on, check all the boxes, put everything up to maximum, run it, test it, get it working flawlessly. Fix the code until it works great. Then when they go and try to run it on the other system, they find out where the bottlenecks are, they will not adjust the code, that takes too much time. They'll just turn the sliders down a little bit. Graphics detail, down a little bit. Draw distance, down a little bit. Lighting and shadows, turn those down a little bit. And then it runs too. So everything that you do on your gaming computer to make the games run the best as possible, 
where you're spent hours tweaking and adjusting and looking up settings online and make it better, updating your video cards, updating your whatever. All that stuff that you do is all that the developers need to do to make the game run on the other system, which is great. We win. Okay, you're with me. So this um, AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, what's it going to do? How does it compare to DLSS? Well, okay, so bear with me now. This is where it's going to get a little bit techy. You take a picture of yourself. You text it to your friends. On your 15 megapixel camera, you look great, right? You're sitting there making your duck face, whatever. You look awesome. You send that picture to your friends and they're like, you know, it's a little bit grainy. Maybe they don't say anything to you, but if there's any text in there that they need to read, they're like, I can't really read it. And you're looking at your picture that you just took. You're like, why can't you read it? It's, it's so clear. Well, what happened was your cell phone carrier or the messaging service that you used compressed that picture down so that it's smaller and they sent it. When they did that, they lost a little bit of, of um, clarity in that picture. And a lot of times they actually shrunk it. So if your picture was this big, they shrunk it down so it was this big. Let's say half the size. Now, if you take that shrunk down picture and you make it back this big again, what happens? There are tiny little pixels in that picture. And the, pix the pixels can be considered dots. We'll just call them dots. And those, that makes up your resolution, your dots per inch or your dots across the bottom and across the top. That's what the resolution measures. These numbers aren't just arbitrary numbers. They represent the number of dots measured in a certain space. When we stretch that out, the number of dots got put cut in half. So if I had, let's say, a thousand dots horizontally, when my picture is this big, when I compress my picture, I have 500 dots. As long as I keep the picture small, it's not a big deal. But when I try to stretch it back out to the regular size, I still only have 500 dots. But the dots have a bigger space between them. That space between them is where you see the graphical degradation, where your image looks bad. That's why TVs that have gone to 4K or now even 8K, when you take a standard definition of 720p or even a 1080 video signal and you stretch it out across a 70 inch TV, it doesn't look very good. It looks great on your computer monitor that is 15 inches, 16 inches, 17 inches. But as you get bigger, the space between those dots gets bigger. Okay. That is what we're talking about here. Okay. People that are gaming, they want a 4K picture. So we can take a 4K picture and we can put it on your big screen TV. The ideal uh, size screen for the resolution that you're running at. And it's saying that a 1080p signal only looks good up to a 15 inch monitor. After 15 inches, you can start to discern the spacing between those pixels. So a 30 inch monitor, you start to see that spacing. So now you need to have a 2K, a true native 2K image so that the spacing is not discernible anymore because you've got more pixels across that resolution. Similarly, when you go to 4K, you don't get much bigger before you start to see spaces between that. What this Fidelity FX super resolution is supposed to do is the same as what the NVIDIA DLSS does. And what that does is this, okay? And again, I'm gonna get a little bit techy. I'm gonna try and explain it in a way that you can understand. The people who already understand this are gonna freak out that I'm simplifying it too much and it's more complex than that. I get it, okay? It is, more, it's very complex. It took a lot of people, a lot of time, and it takes a lot of graphical power to do what it's doing. But in simple terms, if I have a game and I can adjust my resolution, I can run it at 4K, which takes everything 4K pumps that out. I'm going to put it on a 20 inch monitor. Okay, 4K. The graphics card needs to render every single pixel at 4K. There's a lot of pixels at 4K. I don't care what the actual number is. It's a lot of pixels. Okay, that takes a lot of power from the graphics card to be able to render 
all those pixels in real time at 60, 120, 240 frames per second. That's a lot of pictures for it to flash on your screen with that much detail. If you were to turn your resolution down from 4K to let's say 1080p, there's less pixels on the screen, but it's 1080p, but it's still, you still have a 4K monitor. So it takes the 1080p signal, which is the picture, which is this big, it makes it bigger to fill your 4K monitor. But now you have little holes between all the pixels. But it's okay because I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of visual quality for more frames per second. Because I have a 1080p signal, the dots for 1080p, but it fills in the 4K monitor size, the video card doesn't have to work as hard to display that picture, which usually means I get a higher frame rate, more frames per second. If I'm experiencing slowdown in a game, the first thing I usually do is turn down my resolution so that I can get a better frame rate. That's how you fix it. You can start turning down the, the graphical settings as well, yes, but turning down the resolution is an easy way to do that. What DLSS does is it allows you to take a 1080p signal or a 1440p signal, stretch it out to be a 4K signal, and then it uses computers that have done all kinds of image analysis to artificially fill in the blanks in that picture. Okay, so you're with me? So we talked about a picture that has been compressed and then made bigger. We don't get more pixels in there, right? All we do is just increase the gap between those pixels. And by increasing the gap, we fill that whole space, but we've got little black spaces that have no picture data in them when we make that video bigger. They're taking a picture that's small on purpose because they know that they can render that easily. They expand it out to fill the 4K space. Then they take a computer, they tell the computer to figure out what to fill the blanks in with and it fills the blanks in. It does it in real time so that you can't tell a difference. Is it as good as 4K? No, it is not as good as 4K. It will do its best guess and it is getting really good. Version 1.0 of DLSS was not good. It did not guess well and people turned it off. Version 2.0 is reportedly much better. And so everyone's been looking to AMD saying, where's your solution? What are you gonna do? AM, uh, Nvidia is about to kick your butt if you don't get this out. The difference is the NVIDIA solution only works on their higher end graphics cards, their current gen high end graphics cards. The AMD solution is being delayed reportedly because they want to release it across as many product lines as possible so that everybody benefits it at the same time, which could be a lie. It could just be a whole bunch of crap. It means that they're not ready. They haven't figured it out, but they just want to tell you that. And then when they release it, they'll be like, well, whatever, you know, we're sorry. We meant to try and do it, but we could only get it to run on this. That it could be, that could be. But the key here is they said specifically, we also want to include this technology on the current gen gaming systems running our AMD graphics cards, which means the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Why do I care if my PlayStation 5 and my Xbox are reportedly going to support 4K video anyway? 4K at 120 hertz. If it can support that, then who cares? I don't want to run a 1440p that's been super sampled. I want to run 4K. The reason is, and we go back to the processing ability, okay? So when you could process 4K, at 120 uh, hertz or 120 frames per second, the video card starts to, to suffer. And so it starts to degrade um, the quality, the video quality, your, your, frames rate, your frame rates drop. At a 1080p or a 1440p, it can handle that just fine. 
the amount of processing power that it takes to take a 1440p signal, blow it up to 4K, call it 4K, output it as a 4K signal to your TV, and then use AI to fill in all the blanks is less processing power than what it takes to put out the proper 4K signal with the full processing power. The reason why developers are going to get excited about this is something I touched on in a video that I've already released. You can check it out over here. That's my video talking about PlayStation 5 versus Xbox, which one you should buy and why, and also why we need an industry-wide boycott of the Xbox Series S. This technology will benefit gamers if the Xbox Series S is allowed to continue existing as a product. And the reason is that video game system can only produce a 1440p signal at best. It will rely on upscaling techniques to output a 4K signal. And what that means is developers will be able to create their games at a 1440p output, use AMD Fidelity FX to increase it to a 4K signal so that your TV reports it as a 4K and get good frame rates and still get really good looking pictures. The downside is that your system will not actually be processing a 4K signal from the start, which means we will be sacrificing a bit initially. Eventually, what it could mean is that the games can get better. At the beginning of the life cycle, the games are not the best. They're a small step up from the previous generation, and that's very clear when I play Cold War on my PlayStation 5, and I see my wife playing Cold War on the TV right beside me, they look pretty similar. There's very few graphical differences in those two games. So this is a first gen game of the next gen consoles. I expect in time, the graphics should improve enough that I can see a, an actual difference somehow in the lighting or the textures or the, the world or whatever. But I understand why that is, and that's probably because they just wanted to get it out there and they didn't want to spend a lot of time trying to tweak it for the next gen systems when not many people own those right now. I hope this helped you out to understand what this AMD Fidelity FX is all about, what the hype is about, because there's a lot of jargon in there that just doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. I didn't fully understand. I had to do a lot of research on what it was, what it's doing and all that, and try to mix it with things that I already understand about picture de pixel density and make, blowing pictures up and all that stuff. So hopefully I put that in a way that you can understand. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, consider subscribing below. You can also check out some of our videos over here. We do have a lot of other great content to do with video games and technology, but I really hope that you give our automotive stuff a chance too. We've got some great content there, rebuilding stuff, doing road trips and all that. I'd love to see you check those out while you're waiting for more of this technology stuff. I do hope to see you again, but until next time, have a great day.